Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Thursday the 21st of June and a quick look of the week beginning the 25th of June. Uh, before we get on to that let's have a quick look back at the events of the last few days and they've been dominated largely by concerns about escalations in trade wars. That's That can be no better illustrated in the way the DAX has performed over the course of the past few days. Uh, a number of um, German car companies have issued warnings to that effect um, that um, potential trade tariffs could well impact their forward earnings potential. That's seen Daimler shares sell off quite aggressively and we've seen the DAX push lower for the last five days with the prospect that we could break below uh, this key support level around about 12,500 that's been the base thus far um, for the past three to four weeks. So concerns about trade likely to remain front and centre. We've also had an OPEC meeting and the likelihood is we will see a production increase and that in itself is likely to prompt a little bit of a test to the downside in the Brent crude price. We're certainly seeing some evidence of a top starting to form here. We can draw a line through the peaks from the recent highs in May and I think as long as we remain below this trend line there's a decent chance we can come back and test the original breakout point which I identified a few weeks ago in a video of around about $71.65. How we react from there is anybody's guess but ultimately I think whatever OPEC agree and I think they will agree a production increase it could be generally a case of sell the rumor and then buy the fact but ultimately I think in the short term I think central bankers will be hoping that we've hit the peaks when it comes to the rise in oil prices that we've seen over the past few days but I'll certainly be keeping a very close eye on this trend line here from the lows that we saw almost to this day a year ago. This is our one year uptrend line. Now we can we can redraw it so that it takes in these lows through here but ultimately around about $71 I think is going to be a very very key um, a very very key level when it comes to where we go to next and I think also if we look at this in very much closer detail could this be the beginnings of a potential head and shoulders reversal for crude oil prices. Okay so I mean that, that's basically the key levels that I'm looking for with respect to Brent crude, uh, the German DAX. More importantly it's been an important week for the pound as well and I think it's particularly timely with respect to the pound given the fact that it's going to be the two-year anniversary since the Brexit vote. Um, now we have a whole host of economic data coming out next week from the UK economy but one thing I do want to draw your attention to is if you actually look at um, UK GDP since the Brexit vote we haven't really you wouldn't have even known that there had been a referendum vote particularly given the fact that we heard all these portents of doom and gloom um, in the lead up in the event of a no vote we did see a short-term hit but ultimately if we look at a GDP um, table for the UK economy. You can see that in 2016 we posted some decent quarterly numbers 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Um, last year we saw 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0.4. Obviously the previous, the, the current quarter or the first quarter of this year we saw 0.1 and we're going to get the final revision for that first quarter GDP number this coming week on the 29th of June. Obviously a combination of bad weather in March, a sharp slowdown in the construction sector because of the woes of Carillion is likely to see you know, a fairly lacklustre if almost stagnant UK economy in the first quarter but certainly the data that we've seen since then particularly in services and retail sales has shown a significant rebound and I think that's probably why we saw the Bank of England's um, policy makers shift ever so slightly to a slightly more hawkish stance with the 6-3 split that we saw on the Monetary Policy Co Committee arguing for a rate rise in bank rate from 0.5 to 0.75. Now I think it's important not to overestimate um, why um, that has driven the pound up from the lows that we saw at 131.10 earlier today but what is important and interesting I think in this context is the fact that we were able to respect 
this trend line on this cable chart that I drew from the lows of early last year 2017 we've respected that more importantly we've also hit our minimum price objective from our reversal breakout that we that I highlighted at the beginning of May the minimum price objective for this move down was 131.10 we've met that and now the big question is where do we go from here now I think one of the reasons why the Bank of England NPC was slightly more hawkish um, in its statement um, on Thursday was the fact that since Mark Carney made those comments that a May rate hike was not necessarily the done deal markets thought it was we've seen the pound drop from 143 down to 131 and that's an 8% decline in as many weeks and that for me is not something the Bank of England would want it to continue for any length of time because it throws into significant doubt their inflation target. They downgraded their inflation target in the May inflation report. A lower pound pushes inflation up. It's the last thing they want, particularly at a time when oil prices are on the up. So I think there's a bit of tactical voting going on here because ultimately I still think they want to keep the prospect of an August rate rise on the table. That will also be Ian McCafferty's last meeting as an MPC member. And if they're going to raise rates then, then I think ultimately we will want to see Ian McCafferty on the committee. But obviously we'll also need to see the data continue to improve the way that it has done over the past two months. And it has been good in April. It's been good in May. It's also likely to be fairly positive, I think, in June because of the World Cup and you're likely to see quite an awful lot of liquid refreshment consumed over the course, over the course of the past um, few weeks, always assuming that England managed to stay in the competition. On the subject of inflation and consumption, we've also got EU CPI out this week on the 29th of June, also the same day as first quarter GDP. And again, we've seen that start to show signs of life. And I think that's one of the reasons why the ECB is making it quite, uh, you know, was, was quite um, clear in its wish to end QE by the end of this year. But on the flip side, I think they are concerned that it might be slightly transitory and that's why they've pushed back expectations of a rate rise to the back end of 2019, always assuming that we get a rate rise next year at all. It's all about um, manage managing expectations. And ultimately, if you're expecting the Fed to raise rates another four or five times over the course of the next 12 months, what you don't want to see is your currency um, depreciate too much too quickly against that sort of backdrop. We've also got first quarter final GDP for the United States um, and that's coming along with the latest core PCE numbers. So you've got inflation first quarter GDP for the United States coming out on the 28th and the 29th of June. So big week for GDP revisions and also a big week for inflation. So key levels as I've reiterated, um, on crude oil, on the German DAX, and more importantly, on the pound against the dollar. If we can hold above 131.10, then I think there's a decent chance we can head back and retest the highs of around about 134.60. So that's it for this week. Thanks very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.